Hey guys, it's Special Aussie here and welcome to episode 59 of my New York City Wrestling Series for TEW 2016. So this is Halloween in Harlem. We've got a decent little show tonight um, and a, a little surprise. Um, not to mention we've also got a little bit of bad news as well, uh, which I'll get into. And you guys might be able to actually predict what is happening. Uh, but it's, once again, it's kind of a, a bit of negligence by myself. In a way, I th this problem was something that was fixable in certain terms, and I basically didn't really pay too much attention into it when I was doing the uh, the weekly uh, main event shows, and it's kind of come back to bite me in the ass. Uh, but we'll get into the show. We've got a pre-show match as well. Um, just Bear Bukowski um, beating Freedom Eagle in the pre-show. Gets a 50 D plus. Pretty bad. I'm going to release Freedom Eagle now. Um, he's pretty much... He's trash. I, I, You know, I liked him at the start of the series. I thought his mask was quite cool. And, um, you know, being the, the patriotic uh, mask-wearing type of dude. Could have gotten over, but uh, he's just pretty much always been a jobber. Um, so I think it's... It, he's been earning a decent little paycheck, I believe, from us uh, for, what, four years now? So I think... I think he can uh, go unemployed for a little while, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see if anyone actually picks him up. But yeah, Bear Bukowski, um, he's been on a, a very decent run recently. He's going to go into a, a storyline coming up. Uh, it actually starts during this show, so yeah, gets a pre-show victory over Freedom Eagle, beats him by submission with a bear trap. Good stuff. Bear Bukowski is improving in performance skills as well. Uh, which is awesome to see. He actually, he can actually turn out quite well. He becomes quite good um, if he's used constantly. I've seen a few people um, manage, have managed to actually get his stats up quite high. Um, predominantly his performance stats. So yeah, good stuff. Okay, so we open the show off with a 94A. Uh, as you can see, it's a freestyle angle. And it basically, all it is, is the ring generals want a shot at winning back their COT World Tag Team titles. So yeah, the ring generals, uh, of course they were the World Tag Team titles in the Confederation of the Territories. Um, I think they had like, I think it was like 14 defences? I might be wrong, but it was quite high. Um, and yeah, they lost the titles to like two, some, two random dudes. I think they were from 4C some random tag team. I don't even think they were actually a, a, like a, a proper team. So, yeah, they they have basically Marv is the only one that was talking because uh, he has the better entertainment skills and he was the one that said, um, you know, Dean, Dean had his success as the Empire Champion. We've been tag team champions um, in NYCW. Uh, th th those titles have kind of passed us by um, and we want to once again be the most dominant tag team in the world and win back the titles we once had. So yeah, good solid angle to start the show. I think uh, Dean was also rated on his overness, um, so that was okay. So we start off the show with a 77B rated triple threat match. In an exceptional match, Emmanuel Bryant defeated Graham Gorman and Tennessee William in 9.52 when Emmanuel Bryant defeated Graham Gorman by pinfall with a green shock. During the match, we also had Bear Bukowski run in and attack Bryant. Interesting. So there's the start of that feud. Uh, Bukowski is going to go into, hopefully, a three-month uh, feud against Emmanuel Bryant. Uh, predominantly, they won't really be feuding um, off-camera. It'll predominantly be just during our actual events, uh, our pay-per-view events or whatever. Um, and we'll hopefully see some, some developments between those guys. Uh, but yeah, just a, a, it's just a triple threat match. Um, I was going to put the title on the line, but uh, Emmanuel is on nine defenses, and I want his 10th uh, defense to be something special. So yeah, good stuff. 77B, solid opening match. Um, so yeah, then we get a 92A uh, Bear Bukowski menace promo on Emmanuel Bryant. You know, obviously he just interfered. Uh, so we'll get that booked in for New York Nightmare, which is the next event. So we'll get that booked in there. Bear Bukowski versus Emmanuel Bryant, who's now an upper mid-carder, which is awesome. He's got like 90 overness. 
in the tri-state area. Uh, Bear Bukowski is like one of our most over people in uh, the New England area now as well, because he already had a bit of a, a boost on top of that. So, yeah, good stuff. We'll get that booked in. That will be a non-title match, um, I should mention. So a non-title match um, at the next pay-per-view, the New York Nightmare event. Good stuff. 92A. Bear Bukowski's pretty good, boys. He's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to an 82B. This is kind of just a little throwaway match. Um, in an exceptional match, El Serpiente defeated Froshaw in 12-18 by Pim 4 with a Cobra Twist. Um, El Serpiente is a beast. I think we all pretty much know that by this point. Still improving. Improving in his rumble skills there. And uh, gets an 82. Nice. Um, he then cuts a promo on Ernest Youngman, which gets a 100 A star. Basically saying um, that you know, he's been on a run recently, um, you know, on the on the, the touring shows, on the main event shows, and um, he feels after the win against Froshaw just then that he deserves a title match against Ernest Youngman for the next event. So we'll do a one-on-one. -on -one. It will be for the Empire title. Um, of course, El Serpiente. He's, he's got a bit of a... bit of an uh, I wouldn't say it's an alliance, but a bit of allegiance with uh, Marsh Stranger, of course, after he turned heel and uh, won the King of New York tournament title. So that, of course, means he will be versing Ernest Youngman in the future. So yeah, he's a... Uh, we'll say friend, but we'll use it very loosely. His friend, El Serpiente, uh, will be versing Ernest Youngman and uh, could potentially take his title. And, of course... My Stranger might not be too happy about that. So that's pretty cool. We've got that booked in for New York Nightmare for next episode. Uh, actually, next episode will be something else. It actually, episode 60 won't be New York Nightmare. It'll be something something I've, I've talked about in previous episodes. Anyway, we'll get into that after the show. Moving on to the next segment, which is another 82B match. Savage Tiger taking on Matty Faith. In an exceptional match, Savage Tiger Jr. defeated Matty Faith in 20 minutes, 5 seconds, by pinfall, by using underhanded tactics. Um, so yeah, basically, Savage Tiger Jr. cheated to win, and uh, yeah, gives Matty Faith a, a big L. I think that's his first loss so far in his MYCW career. Um, but he's also improving in performance skills, which is pr you know predominantly what I want from him. So that's really good to see. I don't want to push him too fast. Like I said, he's already like incredibly over, unfortunately. And I just hope that uh, TCW or SWF, or actually even US Pro, because they're taking everyone at the moment. I hope uh, none of the big three companies in America come in for him because he is a well, he's a legacy, I suppose. Um, you know, taking after his father. Moving on, okay, uh, actually, I probably should have, shouldn't have should have booked in the match until now, uh, because this is Ernest Youngman, um, he's come out, and he's addressing, well, he's backstage, actually, and he basically accepts El Serpiente's challenge, um, as you'd expect, it gets a 100A star, because it is Ernest Youngman. We then have the cooldown match, which is actually really surprising, I thought this would be a lot worse, I was kind of expecting like a D. But he gets a 71C plus for a six minute match. In a bout that had fantastic heat and good wrestling, Steve Flash defeated Seth Whitehead in 617 by Pim4 with a flash bang. Steve Flash was really off his game. Uh, this was also the cooldown match. And uh, yeah, Seth Whitehead carried Steve Flash in this match, which is odd to see, but still pretty cool. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, we then go into a 95 A-star uh, franchise players menace promo. Uh, brings the crowd back up, which is good to see. Um, not a 100, which is kind of surprising, because both of these guys are really over. Um, yeah, still, 95 is pretty good after the cooldown. Um, and this goes into the next match, which is a tag team title match, which gets an 83 B+. Plus. In an exceptional match, franchise players defeated the Ministry of Darkness in a cage match in 20 minutes, 12 seconds, when Julius Moore defeated Aldous Blackfriar by pinfall with a charging tackle. Franchise players win the NYCW Tag Team titles. And uh, here we have Aldous 
Blackfriar being the weak link. Um, he's still injured, as you can see here. Uh, worked through, took a big toll. Uh, we got the usual excellent chemistry. <laughs> Lack of selling because of the franchise players. Um, but yeah, pretty good. All round, everyone got you know similar ratings except for Aldis. Um, of course, with the injury, he, he probably would have had like a, a high 90, to be fair. Um, because he is really good and he's really over. Um, so yeah, we've got new tag team champions. Uh, these two guys are both cancer backstage, and um, unfortunately, uh, Aldis, with his injury, he was quite unhappy about it, because I think it was maybe a botch, someone botched. I can't remember, I, like the, I, I haven't actually played this save in a while. Um, but yeah, somebody, I think, rem for, him to got, for him to get the injury in the first place, I think someone botched it, and he got really unhappy about that. I then proceeded to not use him because he was injured, and I left him off two of the main event shows, and he became extremely pissed off, had big morale issues, and eventually handed in his seven-day notice. So, yeah, I think he's gone in about four day, three or four days, unfortunately. So, you know, there's no better time to take the titles off them. Um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the Midnight Prowler. Um, we might also let him go um, in the future. I don't know. I, I really like the Ministry of Darkness. They are, you know, with the excellent chemistry. Um, I think they're nearly an E-plus team, uh, team experience, which is awesome. But, yeah, we've lost Aldous now. I don't know what to do with Prowler. We've still got Raven Nightfall. Oh, it's, the whole thing's a bit of a mess now. And like I said at the start of the episode, it is kind of my fault. Um, but anyway, let's move on. So an 83B+. Plus. New tag team champions, the franchise players, their first uh, their first gold. Um, I think, actually, did Ross... Ross win? He might have won the King of New York tournament title in the past. I'm not too sure. He might have. I can't remember. Um, anyway, moving on. We then get a 100 A-star angle. Mars Stranger cuts a promo, um, hyping his upcoming match against Hio del Aguila Americana. Um, of course, you know... The heel versus the face, the American Patriot, or the Mexican American Patriot, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, they are the main event tonight. Uh, I've been using Aguila Americana heaps at the moment, a lot I should say, in the uh, in the main event shows, in the weekly weekly event shows we have. Uh, so yeah, let's see what their match rating gets. Hopefully, it's decent. I don't think Americana. Well, I should say Aguila Americana is uh, all that over yet. I think he might be a C, C plus, and I think Marsh Strange is like a B, probably B plus actually. Um, so yeah, and the match itself gets a 85 B plus. Okay, oh he was off his game as well. That's unfortunate, um, but all good. 85 B plus, highest rating on the show. Um, I'm very happy with that to be honest. In an exceptional match, Marsh Stranger defeated Hio de la Guila Americana in 30 minutes, 20 seconds, by, uh, by submission, sorry, I almost said pinfall, by submission with a Cobra Clutch. Um, yeah, Aguila Americana gets a 65 in ring, and Stranger gets an 88. Of course, this uh, advances the storyline for the Empire title, because, of course, these guys are both in it. Uh, basically... Stranger is obviously, well, he is, he's essentially the number one contender, although, you know, El Serpiente is going to have a title match next week, um, but he, of course, did win the King of New York tournament, so, yeah, that's the whole reasoning behind that, like I mentioned just before. Uh, the overall show rating gets an 88B+, plus, so that's very, very good. We're one point off an A, which kind of sucks, because I would have loved to, an actu to, sorry, to have actually seen that. Um, so we go Marsh Stranger. Um, who else? We go Fro Shaw because he's going to be upset. I don't understand this, but for whatever reason, Fro Shaw is an opener and he gets upset no matter who he verses when he takes a loss. It's uh, It's kind of annoying, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. We will push him in the future. It's just annoying because I like to job... I don't like to job everyone out, but 
certain people need to need to develop their skills a little bit before we decide to eventually push them. Someone like Matty Faith, perfect example. Um, I think we'll go with Hio Della Guila Americana and we'll uh, tell him that he could do better and uh, we'll give the other two guys hugs. I'm not too sure how this is going to go down. He didn't seem too concerned, at least for now. Okay, that's not great, but... Uh, <laughs> oh well. So yeah, um, as I mentioned earlier, we will be... The next episode, episode 60, will be the Hall of Fame show. Okay, so... I'll, I'll make the event now. I don't have a logo or anything. I might make one, I might not. We might just use the, uh, the New York City logo. Uh, but let's... Where am I? Schedule. Okay, so we'll add... Yeah, we'll add an event. Suggest a name here, Overload. We'll just get rid of that. Um, apologies if you can hear my fan. I, I kind of repositioned it, so you probably haven't heard it all episode. Um, but I'm actually having to lean forward um, going into where the fan is now, so you might be able to hear it. Um, so we'll call it the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Uh, ceremony. Hall of Fame ceremony. I, I guess I might change it. Um, I'm not sure how long I want to make it. I feel like I should leave it at two hours because it kind of means uh, means something. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so it's active. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a year. Next year will be what 2021. Um. Anything else? Celebrities? No. Anywhere? Annual? Yes. Uh, what day? I might have to change this off camera. The the day and the and the week isn't. Uh, but it needs to be October. Yeah, we're in October, so it has to be week three or further. I think we will hold it in New York as well. Um, because it kind of needs to be. Uh, I can actually have a look at my calendar, can't I? So week three, Friday, I suppose. Week three. Oh, actually, we can't do week three, Friday, can we? Uh, we can do Saturday, week three, though. Or should we do week four? Because yeah, we'll do week four, Saturday. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Saturday. Hall of Fame ceremony. So we'll have the series, f well, the series, series first Hall of Fame introductee. Uh, you guys all know who it is already. Well, that's good to see, actually. Halloween in Harlem has risen in importance. It's now risen to an above average event. Uh, we've also got spoilers here, of course. Charger Siaki. Um, his contract is running out. He's an opener for SWF. It's pretty amazing, to be honest. He's got lots of C minuses, uh, two Ds, well, D minus and a D, um, 90 basics, little lacking a little bit in psychology, but a B minus at his age, he's 24, is pretty amazing. 90 safety, which is good. B selling, B consistency, B power, good athleticism, lacking in stamina. I think that'll probably be capped there as well, uh, but that's all good. It's got a B in menace as well, uh, 74 star quality. But he is a flabby lightweight, so light heavyweight, sorry. Um, so I think if he, you know, if he turns his muscles up, he should hopefully be able to get a, a bit better star quality. And uh, yeah, they're not actually renewing his contract, so it does look like we will be able to uh, snap him up soon. I'm kind of looking forward, to, looking forward to that. Uh, he's only got a little bit of popularity, but it's in New England, so we can definitely work with that, and uh, we'll build, build him up before he eventually debuts at one of the big events, which will be pretty cool. Okay, so the other thing we need to look at, I uh, need to give for a sure a bonus. Give him $300. It's going to take a little bit, probably. We'll give him 600 There we go. Okay. As you can see, we're making a, a decent profit. I think I ran two shows, maybe three, in New York last uh, month. I'm not too sure. Uh, but we're also pulling more attendance in the New England area, 
As you can see, we're now 53 C minus, so that's gone up from a D plus. So now C minus importance, 56 C minus popularity in tri-state, uh, 26 importance in New England, and 27 popularity there. And of course, we've got some spillover in Great Lakes and in Mid Atlantic. So yeah, we're looking good. We're steadily growing, nearly up to an E plus, I think, which is good to see. Of course, we still need to get to 47 which is, you know, 21 points away, which is quite a bit. Um, but that's all good. Um, nothing really, really else to go over. Some of the recent show ratings, 70C+, 69C+, uh, the 79B was in the Tri-State, so that's expected. And then we got a 77B uh, in, the, in the New England region, so that's pretty cool. Anyways... Anything else to go over? We'll have a look at titles very quickly. Oh, wow. The Prestige is uh, shot up there. Yeah, it was an 81. It's now up to 86. Of course, I changed that to a floating uh, because I felt our tag team was uh, was uh, pretty decent, to be honest. Uh, we, we kind of a, had a decent stacked tag team division um, with some quality talent. And, of course, we're losing one of our best teams which is unfortunate. Definitely it's unfortunate. Um, but it's all good. If you have a look at the creative meeting now, <laughs> the franchise players are the top two franchise players in the company. Go figure. Uh, we've then got Ernest Youngman, um, who you know is basically five years younger than the top two guys. Uh, we've also got Hio de la Guila Americana at number four, which is good to see. Let's have a look at his uh, popularity. So, yeah, it's only a C. So that was a pretty decent match he pulled off. Um, would have been interesting to see if he wasn't actually off his game. And um, we've got Dean Waldorf there as well. Um, Hidden Gems. I think this has just changed because Scythe just got signed to a developmental contract with RIPW. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about bringing in Hammer Hadley. 22 years old. Good solid stats. Good basics. Psychology obviously is lacking, as you would expect. Um, but he's a heel, and I feel like I need another heel. I, I've got this feeling that he and Bear Bukowski could make a really, really good tag team. Um, you know, the menacing big boy heel team. Um, yeah, they could they could do something. Um, I'm still thinking about it because, of course, we may as well do it now, actually. Um, but Freedom Eagle, unfortunately is going to get the sack. He's got 11 months left on his contract. Should we keep him? I don't know. I'll show you his stats before we do it. Like, he's not... His, his performance stats aren't horrible. And they've developed a lot. He was... He was piss at the start of the game. And, I mean, he's got C- minus brawling. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's only got 17 popularity. And he's been here for, for years, so... Oh, I don't know. I really don't. I feel like we should just let him go. He's not going to develop anymore now anyway, so... He does actually have a strong friendship with Gary the Entertainer. Although, I am also thinking about getting rid of Gary the Entertainer as well. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Anyway, I guess we'll leave it for a little while. Maybe we'll let him go at the end of his contract in 11 months. Anyway... Thank you for watching, guys. I've been rambling on, as I usually do. Um, it's just been a while since I recorded, and yeah, there's kind of been a lot going down between now and the last episode, um, as well as a lot of time in real life. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're a new viewer to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one, which will be the Hall of Fame ceremony. Thank you, guys. See you later.